Think about that one thing you want right now. That thing you want more than anything else. See it. Feel it. Hold it in your mind. That thing you want, you can have it. You will have it. Because you have the power to do anything. Abat le ciel. I think I have told you this story before. Um, I knew one guy, black guy in Canada. I didn't know him personally and profoundly or anything. You're going to see why. He's not the kind of guy I would normally be friends with. I knew of him and a lot of other kids at my school knew him and spent more time around him. He was an old black guy, tall, skinny black guy, who he could have gotten into the NBA. So he was good enough at the skills as an NBA player. And I forget, like it was something like he was at the training camp stage, like before you go into the NBA, like, you know, there's some intermediate phase where sure. you're, you know, like they, they, they already know they want you or something. And, you know, they noticed him running around. There was something funny about him running around. And they sat him down and gave him an electrocardiogram and some other tests. He had all the skills. He had the size. He, had, he was an incredibly good basketball player. But he had some kind of heart condition. And they said, sorry, you're out. Right? So this guy, I mean, like I'd laid eyes on him. I mean, I never, sorry. <laughs> you know, it's not, I didn't have anything to talk about with him. But he did kind of coach, you know, kids at the YMCA kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he stood around, and his, his skill level was so high. I mean, this is one of the tricks he did. He would take a, a, a quarter, like a 20, and he could do it with a nickel too, I think. So a five cent, and he would flip it up, and he could get it to land on the top of the, uh, the backboard, mm -hmm. the basketball backboard. Wow. And then he could take a second coin and flip it and hit them and knock them both down so they fell down again. Wow. So this, now this is a lifetime devoted to these skills or spent or wasted on these skills. <laughs> like, you know, and... But, I mean, simply he had some kind of heart condition. So I'd assume it's a arrhythmia or something like yeah. that. So he couldn't do the other components of, of being a, a basketball player. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, it's weird to me watching this kind of think positive, you can do anything message. You, you can't. And most people don't have the 9 out of 10 components this guy had to be a pro basketball player. If that's your dream to be a basketball player, for the vast majority of people, the answer is no, you can't. Not even because you're not good enough, but because someone else is slightly better than you. Right. That's different from you being bad. You showed up at the tryouts that year, and maybe there were just ten people better than you. You know, uh, that's and that's it. You're not at that extremely, extremely high level of skill. Because you have the power to do anything, to achieve anything, to be anything, to have anything. Nothing can stop you. And I did know and talk to another guy. This was a white guy who was in the tra in training to be a tennis pro. So, again, he, was, he didn't have a contract. I think tennis doesn't work that way. You're not signed to a team in tennis. You know, I think it's an individual, it's an individual yeah, sport. I don't know. Okay, but it's, all right, but it's not like you're signed to the Chicago Bulls or something. Right. But he went to one of these pro training camps, and he talked through how many hours a day it was. And, you know, so all day, every day, he does nothing but drill tennis, one of these elite-level camps for going to the pros. And then at the end of the, the process, the judgment was – well, you're really, really good at tennis, but you're not good enough to be a, a pro, an independent, you know, like a, a star in the in the competitive tennis. Yeah. League. And what it, so whatever he'd been doing fourteen hours a day or something, I forget whatever his, his crazy schedule was of practicing tennis all day every day throughout. I guess what would have been all of his junior high and high school years yeah. or something, because th those sports you start really young. I know that's yeah. the majority. Uh, that's the case for the majority of uh, college football right. uh, sure. stars that. Um, but you get brain damage. Yes. <laughs> That's the great thing about that sport. You also yeah. get life life altering injuries and brain damage. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know a very small percentage <laughs> actually make it to the NFL. Sure. So right. Yeah. Well, okay. So look. So take this back. So becoming a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've met enough medical doctors to say this. You can be stupid and be a medical doctor. I want to say that as a statement. I have met people who were stupid and had successful careers as a medical doctor. Right. But to say this, you know, like anything you want to achieve, you can just focus your mind on it positively and you can achieve it. Most people can't become medical doctors, not even if they really, really want to. Your reality is not up for negotiation. It's what you say it is. It's what you decide to make it. You're capable of amazing things. You're capable of anything. You know, you can ask yourself in your own life. I mean, I, I, it's crossed all of our minds whether or not we should become a medical doctor. It probably has. I mean, it's an obvi enough, obvious enough choice, and we all deal with medical doctors. But, you know, starting from where you're at now, could you become a medical doctor? Uh, you know, the answer is probably. 
But the sacrifices involved are sacrifices you wouldn't want to make. Like for me right now at age 39, could I become a medical doctor? Yes. I think the answer is yes. You know, it would mean a lot of debt. It would mean like spending money I don't have. Mm -hmm. It would mean committing myself to institutions I don't believe in and don't like. Doing a lot of work and memorization I consider meaningless. You know, but uh, and maybe it would be like 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's, yeah, okay, let's say 12 years. That's not that unreasonable from where I'm at now. Starting with a BA in political science, you yeah. know, <laughs> right. 12, 12 year process. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, if you set your mind to it, you can do anything. Uh, there are very, very obvious barriers that are mostly, you know, political, economic, and institutional. So, you know, what, what does that mean? To say to somebody, we you just commented, you just said Bezos is mostly pitching this to young people, not middle-aged people. Yeah. But isn't it even more dangerous to be pitching this to, to young people? Yeah, I think so. You know, because you were just, you were, you know, basically talking about this, the same concepts with me um, right before this. And I said, um, you have a middle-aged attitude. Um, right. Like you, you were saying, you aren't totally committed to baking. You said, well, in these circumstances, you know, this is what... Uh, something that I could pursue, uh, but I'm not married to the idea, you know? Um, and I, t I said, well, I think um, these videos are directed towards young people. Right. Um, and a lot of young people expect that what they are what they want right now is what they're going to want in the future. Right. Um, and I guess the other thing is maybe they feel they have nothing to sacrifice in order to achieve it. Which yeah. is very wrong. When you're young, you're making sacrifices yes. that really have terrible consequences. To the right. rest of if you true. make the sacrifices now to go into pre med, and then you flunk out or mm -hmm. something, or you or you decide medical school isn't right for you, that has really long term consequences. If anything, yes. I, I can be less risk averse. I know it, but young people they may feel they have nothing to sacrifice, but they they do. There is nothing you can't do. You can do anything you want to do. Not just small things. Anything. Any fucking thing. You know, there's also a really subtle difference between saying anything and everything. Like, what do you mean? If you tell me I can accomplish everything I want to accomplish, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish. This is already a subtle difference. Now, a lot of what Bezos is about is about, you know, feeling empowered to seduce and sleep with beautiful women, right? When I met guys later in life, like I really wondered if I just had an advantage because I, I, I happened to go to a high school with a lot of good-looking women. And some of those good-looking women were into me, right? Like I really did have the experience where I was like, mm, okay. And now, it, it's obvious, but it's not obvious. How good-looking a woman is has nothing to do with whether or not she finds me attractive. And to, to really understand that, like at, the women who are going to find you attractive – it's not like their perception of me is changed by my perception of them. Mm. And a, a lot of guys grew up with that delusion. Like, oh, they think of themselves as a dude. Like, they're a six. So, therefore, the other women who are attracted to them are going to be a six. Like, no. Like, at rant, there are women who are going to be attracted to you who are really ugly. There are women who attract you who are going to be really objectively attractive, you know, in terms of so, so social, sta right. social standards. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide, working with those raw materials, whether or not you can make something positive out of one situation or another. Yeah. And, you know, like, there are obviously so – a woman can be really attractive and be a meth head, you know, and be a cocaine addict or just be a terror – or be a fundamentalist Christian. I mean, whatever. All those, th all those scenarios happen, so I'm not saying this by any means the, the yeah. most – but it's, it's – my point is here, it's, it's useful advice to say to a young person, look – it is possible that any given woman will be attracted to you. It is possible that some woman who you think of as a 10 on this objective scale, 1 to 10, and you know, I don't believe in the 1 to 10 scale. I've had other videos about that. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. it's possible someone like that will be attracted to you. But that is the exact opposite. That's actually incompatible with saying, if you want that person, no matter who they are, no matter they're a 9 or a 10, you can have anyone and do you really mean anyone or do you mean everyone? You are the king of your life. You are the god of your life. Act like it. Think like it. It's you. It's all you and only you. You are the most powerful thing in your universe. You can do anything you want, anything, anything, anything. Nothing can stop you. If anything gets in your way, you'll just bust through it. You'll burn it down. You'll demolish it. You are too powerful to be stopped. You're doing it. You're already doing it. Your will is all-powerful. Nothing can stop it or even attempt to fight against it. You know, what really does this mean? 
you know, in terms of uh, positive encouragement or what have you. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really, really dangerous. And no, on, on the contrary, a, like dealing with the reality of human shallowness, the same way a dude may just not be interested in a girl at all because of the shape of her nose. Mm-hmm. She has enough to... The girl may reject you for a similar... That's it. Nope. Wrong nose. No. <laughs> and no, 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 no. But here's the other thing. Here's the other thing that's fucking... High school fucks people up this way. In high school, people have damn few choices. There are few choices. And then real life is like the NBA. You know, it could just be there are 10 guys better than you that got here before you for the tryouts. You can meet a great young woman, great chick, great person, and she is into you, and she would be interested in being with you, but some other guy already got there first. She's yeah. already... In, and that's 90% of the time. Yeah. That's, sorry, that's really like a middle-aged perspective. Mm-hmm. But for real, for real, most and it doesn't even matter if the guy's better than me or worse. It doesn't matter. Yeah. He, he he got to the trials first. He's already in the league or whatever you want to say, man. <laughs> like, that's that's a league of one. You know, getting in the NBA as opposed to getting with any right. particular woman, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. What, I, look, I don't believe in the power of positive thinking. I don't believe in this kind of... I, I don't love it. That's really all I have to say. I do not believe in it. I think that what Bezos is doing here is actually really harmful and dangerous. Your will is the law. That thing you want, visualize it in full detail. The way it looks, sounds, feels, tastes, and smells. Your will is already bringing that to fruition. You're about to have it. All right, think after me. I can do anything if I believe I can. Yeah. Yeah. You remember I told you we have this great TV show, Canada's Worst Driver? Uh, sorry, yeah. so it's halfway between a reality TV show and a game show or something. It's like a com- – not everyone can drive a car. <laughs> not everyone can drive a car. When I worked at Starbucks, I worked behind the counter of a Starbucks, normal Starbucks job. There was an old man who came in – I was going to say every day. He came in, I don't know, a couple, every week, let's say. He didn't come in every day. And when he would buy his coffee, he was an old man who would shout at you because he was going deaf. <laughs> that? What is that? And he would pay putting each coin on the counter, Right? He'd be like, what? What is that? Is that a dollar? Is that 25 cents? In Canada, we have dollar twins. We're really loudly asking with each, with each coin, what is that? Is that a quarter? Is that a dollar or whatever, right? So this guy, he's, he's, he's part deaf and he's obviously like completely blind, right? And then he would uh, uh, once, this only happened once. I just, maybe it wasn't a dude who was there that often. But once I remember I just said to him, I said, sir, we didn't do this at Starbucks. Sir, I'm going to take your coffee and put it down on your table for you. You know what I mean? So that there's no way he can actually place the cup on the table. Like, you know what I mean? Because, yeah. And then you know, I went over and did that. And, you know, because he's bumping into like three chairs. He's not seeing chairs that are in front of him. He's not seeing where the table is. This dude is, is legally blind. And then he gets in his Cadillac and drives home. No. He's driving a car every day, right? This is an obvious public menace. I don't know how we see I mean, obviously maybe he's nearsighted enough foresighted, but still, how do you see the how do you see the wheel or whatever? You know, this guy is dangerous. And I, I did see him hit a uh, a parking meter. Uh, you know, when parking the car where you hit the you hit the parking meter and knock knock it over. So I anyway, I'm not but you know yes, it's easy to say not everyone can get in the NBA, not everyone can can be a medical doctor. Not everyone can be a model. Not everyone can date the particular girl they have a crush on yeah. at the office. Most of the time because she already has a dude, mm-hmm. right? Whether or not the dude's better than you is irrelevant. But not everybody can drive a car, you know? Yeah. I, I think that's really worth appreciating. <laughs> yeah. And Unstated in this video is that everybody is entitled to yeah, yeah. Um, get what they want. That thing you want, nothing is stopping you from achieving it. Nothing. Limits only exist if you let them. You can do anything you want if you just believe you're able to. Everyone and everything wants you to succeed. I want you to succeed. The universe wants you to succeed. Everything around you is just an extension of yourself, an extension of your will. Everybody is entitled to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, get what they want, like achieve anything they want. That's that's true. That's you know what though. I want to relate that to both of the prior examples. Okay, the ultimate reason why you should not drive a car is because you're a threat to others. Yes. You're you're gonna harm others. But I mean, also, if I said to you right now, 
you know, damn it, Melissa, I'm going to devote everything to becoming a medical doctor. That's going to have really negative effects on you. That's going to have negative effects on my daughter. That's going to have negative effects on my mom in her last years of living and so on. It's actually, I mean, I know like becoming a medical doctor is not that evil. You know, it's not as evil. It's not as self-indulgent as if I said to you, I'm going to get into base jumping or, uh, you know, uh, uh, what was it? Paragliding or downhill skiing. I said, damn it. My top priority from now on is rocket skiing. Have you heard of rocket skiing? Yeah. Anyway. No. Yeah. That's what they strap rockets on. Skis. So it's not something self-indulgent like that. But yeah, sure. Part of it has to be what is the impact on the, on the other people around you? Mm-hmm. And are you going to sacrifice? all that stuff sure if I take ooh, if I took 12 years to become a medical doctor it, the negative effect on you my daughter my mom those few people in my life negative effect on my YouTube channel <laughs> no it's uh, it, it, that all that's worth talking about apart from the fact that maybe I'd be a terrible doctor and I'd be I'd be a <laughs> bad impact on my patients maybe this is not something I'd be I'd be excellent at yeah anyway look so look you know just bring it back to what is the moral of the story of course, economics matter. I mean, for a lot of these people, poverty is going to be the reason they can't do what they want to do, mm-hmm. including relationships with members of the opposite sex and stuff, too. Poverty yeah. is an issue. I mean, economics really matters. Political circumstances really matter. You were just using the word entitlement. There is an element of white privilege here. I was just, I did research a couple of weeks ago on the Native American colleges in the United States, the colleges that are just for, you know, Native Americans, you know, woo. Okay, so if you're born on a Native reservation and this is the college you have access to and these are the only topics being taught, there are political and then, you know, ultimately, of course, institutional uh, questions. I'm still dealing with it. I'm still dealing with the check mark boxes I need to, you know, get through university, my second university degree and so on. And there's probably going to be a third and a fourth after that. But, I mean, ec- the economic, political, and institutional hurdles that are in front of you are so much more important than the desire you have to run down that racetrack, to run over those hurdles. So much more important. And then beyond that, I think, like the basketball player I mentioned at the start, you might think you've got all the skills, and then you only find out when you start doing it yeah. that there's that you don't. You don't have what it takes. You know, it's, in his case, it's a heart condition. There may be things invisible to you. The classic example is guys who go into medicine and just can't cope with surgery. You know, guys who vomit and are yeah. nervous and freak out. Guys who just mm-hmm. don't have what it takes to cut open a human being and sew them back up again on a mental level or whatever you want to say, you know. But they're all in every line of work. There are things like that. You thought you have what it takes you know, to get into the MBA or to be a surgeon or whatever it was. And then in the process of doing it, you find out, you find out that you don't. You're capable of anything. There is nothing you can't do. Everything in your life has led you to this point. Everything in your life happened because you made it happen. There were no accidents, no coincidences, no luck. It all happened because you made it happen. This kind of relates to what you were talking about recently about destiny. Yeah. Like believing that one career one just anything in your life is your destiny um yeah in this in this same way that's dangerous um and unhealthy really like to like if you make it to this point in a medical career and you realize you cannot perform surgery like you shouldn't feel like oh like this was right this was what i was supposed to be doing um and then that would prevent you from you know accepting that mm. You just can't be a medical doctor, or right? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And uh, you know, obviously, people apply that same way of thinking about destiny to their sex lives. Yeah, the the mm-hmm. people they fall in love with, or the yeah, people they think they they think they person. ought to fall in love with, or mm-hmm. the person they thought they would be with forever, and so on. Yeah, that's deeply challenging. I mean, that's compared to the stuff we we're just talking about in terms of religion. That's probably way more deeply challenging. The belief in personal destiny as it attaches to your love life and your sex life. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Yeah. All right. That's a wrap. You're a genius. You're a king. You're a god. You are the most epic thing in the entire universe. You are anything you want to be. So that thing you want to be, that thing you want to have, think about it. Guess what? It's right here. All you have to do is reach out and take it. Abat le ciel.